adulting, living with wisdom abound beyond your years. Amen? Is everybody out there? You awake? Oh, they, wait, I love that they did this during first row. I don't ever get to see, but past the first row, I can't see anybody's faces. So look at all these. Just smile, smile, smile. It's wonderful. Okay, you can turn the lights off. Now. <laughs> well, good morning, church. Everybody doing all right? Well, my name is Jason. I serve with Youth for Christ East Michigan and Evident Church. It is an honor to be here to give the Word of God this morning. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to look at the first 13 verses. I got to confess, uh, it has been, I actually got to go over in between services and uh, kids' church, they rock over there. They had like glow bands and stuff, having a dance. So if you don't volunteer in kids' church, you might want to give a, a, one of the service times. Of all. They had glow bands and stuff like, oh, let's dance for Jesus, amen? So it's kind of like, okay, we're, any espresso drinkers? Anybody like espresso? GJ, really? Well, I guess why, right? Okay. Well, I, I didn't know you could put espresso in coffee. That's a thing. Some of y'all are like, that takes it to the next level. Okay, I'm, I, maybe I'll try that before the next time I preach. That might be dangerous. We will take everything out on this stage, right? there, arms and everything, right? Well, anyway, um, I want to talk to you this morning with this subject of adulting. And I got to share with you, I'm coming off of eight days of camping. Um, I'll share a couple of stories because, you know, God gives pastors these moments that happen. Eight days of camping, eight days of getting away. Just me, my wife, and my son, we went to a Christian camp and it was awesome because we didn't watch any news, no so. It was great. And look, the people at home are like, wow, you can do that? Yes, you can do that. Um, so I have no idea what's going on in the world. It's so weird, and I'm not anxious to find out. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not anxious to, like, die back in. Um, just going to the store, though, uh, yesterday uh, was fascinating to me because there were two people kind of having a meltdown about the pandemic and stuff. I'm like, uh-oh. Like, like, did I miss something? I kind of, that fear of missing out, you know what I'm talking about? But I'm okay with that, right? Because we need time to get away and to recharge. And I hope as you're here this morning, as you're joining us at home this morning, um, that you're ready to recharge. Now, if I were to say adulthood is not all it's cracked up to be, who would say amen? amen. No, that wasn't loud enough. I said adulthood is not all it's cracked up to be. Say amen. amen. I am literally on the eve, I had to ask my wife, 48 years. Tomorrow's my birthday. I know, I know. Happy birthday. Four, I'm, I'm on my way. GJ, we like summer birthdays, right? Because all you other birthdays, you got to take snacks to school. July birthdays, don't get to do that. We did, they asked, when's your birthday? July. Oh, okay, you just got the fourth. That's it. But summer birthdays, where did July birthdays at? Anybody raise your hand? Come on. Oh, oh, there we go. June and July. Yeah, just put all the summer. I see you, brother and sister. I see you. We suffer together. But, but adulthood is really not all it's cracked up to be. I honestly thought by this age I would have more wisdom. I think God's given me some wisdom, but I thought I'd be smarter about things, you know? Because I, I could think of my dad. My dad knew how to cut the grass. And remember I talked about that last time I was here. He would cut it straight and then diagonal, and it would be perfect. I cut the grass and hit a rock, and it's zigzag all over the place. You know what I'm saying? I thought adulthood was going to be more than it was. And as we read in Proverbs chapter 4, as we've been going through this series this month, understanding that the 101 of adulthood requires us to dive into God's Word. Amen? So follow along, if you will, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. The writer begins, and I love how he begins. He says, my children. You know, when somebody says my children or son or daughter, you get attention. He really wants you to understand this. My children, listen when your father corrects you. Pay attention and learn good judgment. For I am giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instruction, for I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my mother's only child. My father taught me, take my words to heart. Follow my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, develop good judgment. Don't forget my words and turn away from them. Verse 6, don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Stop right there. Verse 7. Now, I'm in the NLT, so yours may read a little different. You see that in verse 7? Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you'll ever do. Think about that for a second. Verse 8, if you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. Verse 10, my child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, don't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. 
Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. I have this highlighted in my Bible. Guard them, for they are the key of life. Heavenly Father, we just give you this time right now, Lord, as we stand together on one accord, as we have worshiped your name, as, as we are gathered together to just grow deeper from you, from your word. We honor you, Lord. Continue to guide us. Help us to be the adults, the men and women, the teenagers, the children that we are called to be. In your son, we pray all God's people said, amen. amen. So here's a question for you. What does knowing God's will even mean? I don't know. God has taken me back to the basics this last eight days. And, and I, I came in and saw uh, Steve Munger. I'm like, okay, Steve, we got to start planning, planning for the Lands Cruise School event at your house. And we got to start doing it because my mind automatically goes in the fall. And with Youth for Christ, I'm ready to go. And Steve was like, take it down a notch. It's just 8 o'clock in the morning. Let's bring it down a little bit. Bring, take it down. But, but what does what is knowing God's will even mean? God is so omnipotent. He's so amazing. We just sang about him. He's so awesome. I love that line in What a Beautiful Name. It says, the heavens are roaring. Think about that for a second. The heavens are roaring. The majesty of God. And, you know, I, I, I got to confess, when, when I fo focus and fix my eyes on these verses, I'm reminded that God wants to do something amazing. Look at me. With each and every one of you, they've left me just enough light. I can see everybody now. Think about that. If God can take you wherever you're at in your walk, wherever you're at in your journey, because we're all on a journey. I can't believe in two years I'm going to be 50. I feel about 17. Some of you say you look 17. Thank you so much. I'll receive it. But I do. I like when did for it. My dad, my dad texted me this morning. I got two texts this morning. One of my dad, he says, uh, tomorrow's your birthday, right? He knows when it is. He just does that to mess with me. He's like, you're going to be what, 52, right? He just does that. And then I got another text from a student, and um, the student said, tell me you didn't do it. They're watching right now online because I told them to. He said, tell me you didn't do it. I'm like, what? You cut your hair. Oh. I'm like, I'm not Samson. It's okay. It'll grow back. <laughs> he was like, that was a beautiful afro. I was like, well, you try maintaining it, okay? <laughs> but but I, I have those moments where, like, when my dad called me, I'm like, wow, I, I expected to be wiser than I was or am I. I expect to do wiser than I am at my age. But God has given us this journey. And whereas we may not have the wisdom we think we have, we can rely on God's wisdom always. Does that make sense? Because we can all look back and say, well, I wish I, wish I would have, could have, should have, right? And you see people doing that daily. Think about that. I look at G.J., and G.J. is at a point that I can remember vividly when Jackson was like this big, and I'm like, okay, I'm not, I got to get some sleep sometime. They said I wasn't going to get any sleep, but if this baby cries one more time, then, then I became the swaddling king, and I could, if you don't know what swaddling is, look it up later. I could swaddle them, and I, and I could hold them and cradle them, and everybody told me, all the adults, they just cherish that time, right? And I'm telling you that, G.J., I'm telling all the new parents that, because when they start walking, then you start running. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And then some of you who have teenagers look at me and I cherish that time. Because when they start talking, they get sassy. Somebody said amen. amen. Oh, that was a lot of amen. That's next week's service right there. <laughs> but think about that. When we focus on God and we say, God, I want you to guide my journey. I want to have the wisdom of God. And I'm going to say this statement with all due respect. We always assume wisdom comes with age, but it doesn't. There are a lot of wise teenagers that I've talked to over the years. A lot of wise young adults that I've talked to over the years. And think about this. Jesus used the example of children, didn't he? He said, bring the little children. And I mean, if we were to go in those rooms now and just listen to them celebrating, every time my son brings his sheet home from, from Evident Church, he wants to go over it Sunday night. I love that. Why can't we be like that? Why can't we take the messages that are delivered from here? Why can't we take the, the music and, and worship times that we have, take it with us? That's a challenge to each and every one of us. It doesn't just end at 12.15 when we walk out of those doors. Amen? It's a continual journey. Four points I want to give you this morning, and I think that they will inspire you and guide you. The first is this. This scripture tells us to listen. Listening is the forgotten art Nobody listens anymore. I've seen business. As a matter of fact, um, not to pick on the school district, but I am, but Chippewa Valley Schools. Um, I'm going to pick. I, I, during COVID, I don't know why I was a glutton. I would go on and watch their board meetings. I, in all fairness, I did Anchor Bay, too, and I did uh, Utica Schools. 
Oh my gosh, they let anybody and everybody talk. And I'll pop me some popcorn and just watch the show. I'm like, and these people were frustrated and mad. And, uh, and some of you, if you go to Chippewa Valley schools, you'll remember this because this is hilarious because the superintendent there is hilarious. He's a good guy. I know him. Real cool guy. He gets, they would question, well, we got to do this. And we got to have this precaution and this precaution. And we got to have the janitors do all this. And, and the, the superintendent is sitting there like, the janitors are supposed to do what? They're not trained to do that. And he kind of made a joke that, that only I found funny. I thought it was hilarious. But, but well, you shouldn't talk like that. But, but. Why do, we, why do we not listen? And when God is speaking, we need to listen even more. Toward the last point, I'll illustrate that in a few minutes. I had a time this last week where I had to listen. And it was hard. It was hard. One instance that does come to mind, not that time, but this, oh, oh, during the week uh, before we left, we decided, and I got the name right this time, Pastor Josh. I didn't, because I don't swim. Don't judge me, y'all. Don't, I never learned to swim. Me, my wife, and my son decided to go paddle boarding. She's watching now, and I'm telling the story. And I've never been paddle. I thought it was kayaking, but it was paddle boarding, right? In a canoe, right? And we, we get in, and I, wait, it's not a canoe. What is it called? What's the thing called? A boat? I was canoeing. What was, oh, paddle. I said that's the first service. Canoeing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Canoeing. See, this story doesn't end well. It ends Okay. So literally, my wife and son are going to get in, and they got their life jackets on. So I'm going to be, you know, I didn't have any social media, but I had my phone for pictures and videos. I'm going to take the video. I'll just stay on land. But then my son, little six-year-old, looked at me. Daddy, wouldst thou not go canoeing with us? He said it right. I said, sure. So I grabbed a life jacket that hit me right about here. And I get in. And I've never been really canoeing before. So I said, well, I'll sit in the middle. And then he could, my wife, and she knows a lot more than I do. She said, no, you sit at the end. I'll sit at the end. She, he, he'll sit in the middle. So we push off, right? Now, listen, I got, all, I got my phone on me. I'm thinking, oh, this thing tips. Oh, I can't swim. It's going down, right? Now, I'm going to give you the end of the story. I didn't tip over. Some of you are hoping for it. Pray for yourselves right now. I didn't tip over. Some of you at home while you're like, oh, he tipped. I didn't tip over. But as we were going, I know that I didn't know what to do. And we were like kind of going in circles at some point. Because what I was doing, I was taking those paddles, and Shelly was paddling one way, and I was paddling the other way, and we were just like this. But after a while, I learned that I just got to duplicate what she does because she knows what she's doing. We made it back safely. The boat didn't tip over. Can we say amen? Put some claps in the comments. Because if it tipped over, it would have been a whole different story. <laughs> but, but I had to work with her. And don't we need to do that with God? God is sending us in a direction. Let's paddle with him and not against him. He's going to win. Let's paddle with him. I got to admit that the fear that crept up in me when I was looking down and I couldn't see the bottom, it's just a thing of mine. And I'm like, uh-oh, if this thing tip, tips over, I mean, my wife can swim. She'll save me, but we got to save the kid first. We got to save the kid first. That poor little life jacket. I'm glad we took, there's no pictures on social media, so don't look for him, okay? I know, right? But, but think about it. If, if we just listen, kind of like that, but I had to listen and watch. But listening is a forgotten. We don't even see that around all that much anymore. People don't want to listen. We need to be people who do want to listen, not only to the Word of God, but to, to those that are around us, those that, that can instruct us gently. Look this up later. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 and 34. You don't have to look it up now, but look it up later great selection of scripture it talks about Paul and Silas and talks about their journey. We know, we know they had to listen for God. Could you imagine being in jail like they were? They were in jail. What'd they do? They started singing worship songs. I don't know that anybody in jail is going to necessarily think first things first. Let me think, sing some worship songs. And everybody like looked down upon them. But God had a plan. Secondly, you can write this down. Not only listening, but wisdom. Don't undervalue this. Don't undervalue wisdom. Wisdom is so important. You see it pop up. He says, don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Verse 7, getting wisdom. I love that. I, just, I think that is the funniest thing to read. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. That, that, that whole, it's probably grammatically all over the place. But I love that. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can ever do. One of my passions um, 
and I may preach about it sometime, but I love studying generations and generational trends. And a uh, current book that I'm reading um, called You Lost Me, uh, I think it's Dave Kinnaman, I can't remember the author's name, but You Lost Me, it's a great book. But he talks through this book how generationally uh, we're losing that biblical-based focus. So for instance, there is a such thing as boomers, if you're a teenager in the room, baby boomers, uh, in their generation, biblically-based focus, basically it talked about Christ. Uh, they had a 65% biblically-based focus. In other words, one in three people you talk to were probably talking about Jesus Christ. Then my generation came across. Generation X, Nirvana ruined us. They ruined us. You went from 65% to 32%. Half. Then those blessed millennials, don't judge them, they're in the room, they come along. You go from 65%, 32%, to 19% for the millennials. And Generation Z, the current uh, teenagers, you know what theirs is? 4%. 4%. Biblical worldview. That's 1 in 25. In a matter of 60, 65 years, we went from 1 in 3 to 1 in 25. Think about this, though. When we talk about wisdom, they are hearkening to their grandparents now. So those of you empty nesters think your turn is done, it's not done. We need you. Because that 4% is saying that six, 65, they had 65% biblical worldview. I want to know more about that. Think about that for a second. Godly wisdom. So as I said earlier, we went camping. Joyous time. We bought a camper. Oh, my gosh, I'm an adult now. We went through, and, and my wife found we drove all the way across to Ludington. And one day, she had to be to work at night. And, and, and we, were, we got the camper. It's beautiful. It's all nice and new. The guy gave us a tour of the camper, you know, got us showed us how to do the hitch and the sway bar. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We got it back. We were taking it to our storage unit when all of a sudden we discovered something. We didn't know how to park it. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Right? I thought jackknife was a good thing. I thought that was like a knife you keep in your pocket like for camper. Yeah, no. And my wife is significantly smarter than I am when it comes to driving. And in 13 years of marriage, I've never heard her say, we were literally trying to park this thing. She said, Jason, this defies everything I know about driving. If you know my wife, when that statement, I was like, I did the pastor thing. Watch this, Josh. I said, well, let's just pray. Jason, don't start with me. We're not just going to, we got to figure this out. <laughs> That's a pastor moment. We pray and we ended up, we ended up calling a friend, Bob Siska. He's watching too. I told him to watch this morning. Bob Siska, who lives in Algonac. Bob's in his late 60s. He's been camping since, like, Moses went camping one time. <laughs> I, he knows. I, I tell him that all the time. He, we laugh about it. And he came, and I'm going to tell you something. You talk about godly wisdom. He came the next day. He said, I'll be there at 5 o'clock. He came and showed us how to park this thing. Because in our mind, every time we turn right, some of you have been camping, it goes left. Every time we turn left, it goes, it goes right. It didn't make sense. But Bob's wisdom came into play. And he was able to help us. And there were times where we were trying to park the thing where literally he's walking alongside the car and he's moving the steering wheel because we didn't know what to do. Oh, I don't want to quote the song, but Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> right? Think about that. If we could just let God uh, guide us. Kids get it. But as adults, we want an adult one-on-one. -on -one. Let's let God guide us. Let's li literally, God, you take the wheel and take me where I need to go because I don't know where I'm going. And we get scars and we get bruises. And our vehicle has a little dent in it now because of a jackknife, but we'll get it fixed. Pray for my deductible, y'all. We'll pray for that later. But wisdom, don't undervalue wisdom. He, the writer's saying, listen, don't give up on wisdom and godly wisdom. And if you've got somebody who gives you godly wisdom, listen. You may not agree with it, but trust it. That's what godly mentors are. And here at Evident Church, it's so nice to see that we have people in our midst that have godly wisdom, that have been through some things. I have this dream post-COVID. I've been working on this, this project with Youth for Christ of doing an intergenerational service in each of our areas where we bring together 40s. Well, I won't say 40s. I'm still 40. I'll say, I'll say 70 and 80-somethings. They have amazing, amazing journey. And teenagers, bring them together. Get some pizzas because everybody likes pizzas somewhat. And talk about God. Let's stop making it so complicated. Well, you got to do this to entertain you. Gotta, no, no, no. I think we're beyond that point because if Jesus is just entertainment, we've missed it. It's a heart, a heart dedicated to him, a heart listening to him and relying on his wisdom. Think about that for a second. You know, it's often said that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 
And when I hear that six, going from 65% to 4%, it could kind of make you frown. But think about this. If 4% of Generation Z hasn't, doesn't really know about God or have a biblical worldview, that's a great harvest we can go after because they have no idea anyway. And when they get it, and we know it's real, we know, we just sang about how real it is. You know that line in that song, uh, Even So Come, where it says he's coming soon? That could be scary to some people. Think about it. That, could be, that line is so powerful. He's coming. He's, I get so excited. I get goose. I got goosebumps right now. When I sing that, I say, he's coming soon. And everything he's got for us is so much better than all this down here, free from pain. Right? I, I, I joke about this with the teenagers. Say, my, my heavenly body, I just want to have blonde hair. Just see what it feels like. Let it flow. Long, <laughs> let it flow. Right, right, right? Think about it. And have some fun with it and enjoy ourselves. Think about that. God will push us in that direction. That harvest is plentiful, even though the workers might be few. Thirdly, not only listening to wisdom, but good judgment will grow as you grow in your faith. Good judgment. Good job. I got to tell you, I love directions. Anybody? Wait, 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 wait. Let me backtrack. Backtrack because you know me. Now, when it comes to building things, that's a whole different story. But, but I love knowing where I'm going when I'm lost. Anybody else? Anybody else get frustrated when you're someplace and you don't know where you are? And it's like, I need, yeah, some of you are looking at your spouses now. I'm sorry. I didn't talk about it over lunch. I just, yeah. But, but jot this down for later. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 9. Look at it later. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 9. He's a direction giver. And, and he causes us to have great judgment. I, 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 I got to confess, and I, I, was, I was thinking about you, GJ, just as we were worshiping. It's fascinating to me when Jackson was born. I, I, I was good. You know, I, I was the king of the swaddle. You know, I got, I got what I'm supposed to do and stuff. But a few years later, it kind of hit me. And I struggled a little bit. And I remember talking to a, a gentleman who had had six kids who knew something about something, right? Who basically kind of, you know, slapped me up. He didn't literally, but kind of get it together. Because in my mind, I was thinking, God gave me, I've messed up some things in my life. I don't want to mess up this little guy, right? When I needed somebody who was wiser than me and who's been there and had better judgment to say to me, you know what? You got this. But you know what he did that was so cool after that? He said, but if you need any help, call me. Think about that. If God's taking you on a journey, yes, we pray for each other. and You pray for one another, but be available to talk. Maybe it's after service and just say, you know what? I've been there. I, got, I had four teenagers and I didn't know. I, look, I have no hair left. I pulled it all out. And you got somebody struggling with their teeth or you got a prodigal or you got little ones and you don't know what to do. That's when the family of God comes together and instructs each other what to do. Does that make sense? That's pretty easy. But that good judgment will grow as you grow in your faith. He will also comfort us. Comfort us through the journey that we're on. Comfort us through the, the, the hard times that we face. And he will also, always, also strengthen us. Strengthen us. So I did something that I've never done in all my years of preaching. And I left the fourth point for God to speak to me when I was at camp. I went off with my journal and my glasses because they had to get on, so I had to have my glasses, and my Bible. And I said, okay, God, I know where you want to take me, but I want to be open and available to you. I, I worked on this sermon for the three weeks prior, but I said that. He kept telling me, wait, right? We wait, we wait for you, right? And I didn't want to wait, so I want to, want to show a picture of where I had to wait, a place that's very, very significant to me at the, um, the camp I was at. And it, uh, it, looks, it looked menacing when I first walked that path, oh gosh, 17 years ago or so. It was dark. Um, I had just moved up here from up here, like 30 minutes north from Detroit. So that was unusual to me, okay, in the dark with no street lights. And I remember being out there like scared and seeing these little lightning bugs do their thing. And I was like, what's that? Never seen that in Detroit, but okay. So as I was praying and, and, and just praying specifically for this morning's message, I walked that path again at the day. And I tell you, I took my journal, my Bible, my glass of a pen, and I was waiting for God to speak to me. And let me tell you something. I thought, I said, it's going to be awesome, right? I'm going to get out there five minutes. I'm going to take one step, and I'm going to stand like Moses did, and it's just going to be great. Forty minutes later, 
after the mosquitoes were eating me up. And I swear I saw a cicada, but I'm not sure. And everything in me wanted to just leave and say, I'll go back, go back to my camper and I can write what I want to write there. You know what I mean? I was making every, oh, it looks like it's going to, oh, it's a couple of drills. But I waited it out. Another 10 minutes. And God began to speak to me. You see, that road was important for me. And it leads to the last point. Time to walk. Time to run. Which one applies to you? You see, the baby boom that's happening in every day church reveals to us one thing. We can sit every one of those babies down here safely, and we can tell them to run, but they're not ready to run yet. Some of them, the toddler age, we can tell them to walk. And they might actually understand what we're saying. They might grab the front of the chair and kind of pull themselves up and, and try to toddle a little bit. What about you when it comes to your faith, when it comes to being the adult that God has created you to be? And these were a couple of the points I wrote down. If you want to jot these down, this was straight from God, so if you've got an issue with it, talk to him about it. Prayer, and this was something I'd heard many years ago, is not the position of your words, but the position of your heart. Prayer is not the position of your words, but the position of your heart. Second thing that God just kind of gave me, Mark 1, 35, you can look it up later. If you knew what Jesus knew, you would pray like Jesus prayed. I don't know who that's for. Take it, but I received it. Jesus prayed with the fervency of his heart. Aren't we called to pray the same way? And the last one is this. There is always a mess on the way to Jesus Christ. Anybody want to testify to that? We go through some messes. We go through some things. I'm going to invite the, the worship team up. And as we close, I want to share this. Whatever mess you might be dealing with, maybe you say, I can't even crawl, PJ. I can't. You talk about running and walking and listening to God and, and wisdom and relying on him, but I can't even crawl at this point. You know what God says? You know what Jesus says? He says, that's okay, crawl anyway. Because once you begin crawling, then you can begin walking. And once you begin walking, then it's time to run to the hands of our Father. Amen? The creators of golf balls, of all things, which is, I've, I was told between services, is a godly sport, so there we go. The creator of golf balls, the two creators, that is, when they initially created golf balls, actually created them smooth. I don't know if you knew that or not. They didn't have, I call them divots first service. They're dimples. See how much I know? I divots. I don't know. They, they actually didn't have any dimples. They were smooth. But what they discovered is when the golf ball was hit and, and smooth, it had all these nicks and they look unsightly and grass stains and all that. So they still get that, but to a greater degree. So they put those dimples in to help with that, to help the look of it. And they glossed it over with the dimples. And they noticed, yeah, they still got nicked, but nothing like they did when they were smooth. But what they also noticed is with those dimples, the golf ball traveled further than it did smooth. God is putting dimples on each and every one of us. Not these dimples, but dimples, scars. And he's going to take you further than even you think. But are you going to trust him? His power, his majesty, his greatness. You see, Moses went in and he said, look, who am I supposed to tell them you are? And God says, I am. Could you imagine Moses Moses, can you give me a first? God, give me a, a first, middle, or last name. God said, no, you tell them I am. He is the great I am. And if he's that for you, if you're struggling in a, on your journey of being an adult, I got to tell you, I, I don't try to figure out much anymore. I really don't. I just have to rely on God and trust him to lead me on this journey. When I stood on that path, a lot of memories flowed back. A lot of concerns that I had and struggles that I had. And it was so interesting. I started to smile about some of them because I'm like, God, you totally took care of that. And I forgot about it. As we worship to this song, I'm going to pray in just a few moments. Allow God to speak to you. What has your journey been like? Has it been rough lately? Has it been pretty good lately? But, man, there was a rough patch there. Then let's rejoice in him for the future provision. 
that our great God gives us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. You are great and you are mighty. Scripture tells us there's a battle that gets fought, but you win the battle, you win the war, and that no power can stand against you. So God, as we worship you, prayer is very simple. Adulting 101, all that means is we trust you more and more and more. Our kids get it, help us to get it. We love you, Lord. And your son, we pray. And God's people say, amen. Would you stand with us and let's worship his name?